Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. Follow the links in the description below. Hello and welcome to Furious Driving. I'm here at Brooklands, the birthplace of motorsport, the home of aviation and many other things. Over its long and illustrious history and today it's home to a gazillion beautiful Italian cars because it's the Auto Italia Italian Car Day which kind of makes sense to be here really doesn't it? Now I'm going to give you a quick walk around here because there are cars literally everywhere but I'm not going to do my usual sort of walk around spotting and chatting about every single car because I'm missing out on taking photos which is what I really like doing at car shows and the last few shows I've done I've been filming them not photographing them so this one's going to be a bit different although there will be a little bit of walking around and the occasional bit of chat but mostly it's going to be a bit of a slideshow really because I want to sort of spend a bit of time taking photos so I've brought Stills camera, and I've even brought a film camera as well. So, so some, shooting some digits and some silver halide, and I'll be showing you as much as I can. Well, showing the digital stuff anyway. Right, let's take a look around. So they've split all the cars into Mark specific parking. So here we've got all the Alfa Romeos, which are still arriving, even though it's approaching midday. And there are some rare beasts over here. It's a modified 166 next to that three litre GTV. Plenty of 156s. And even quite a few 145s like mine here. Now a quick poke over here because behind this 4C, which is of course beautiful, there is a Q4 Crosswagon 156. Oh my word. How often do you see one of these? And the answer is not very at all. The only, only available left-hand drive for the European market. Wow, and it's for sale as well, six grand. These things have got expensive all of a sudden. Oh wow, that's not a factory color on that, what, that 33. It looks really good though. Oh, that's cool. Such a great looking car, so many angles. It's like a, a sporty Volvo next to a 146 Ti, which is opposite. I saw another 146 Ti over there. Super rare. And this guy's got the best game going ever with that number plate. Now I'm not going to look away from another 145 because they're so rare and when you see so many of them in one place, it's always a novelty. And that is next to this absolutely fabulous GT1600 Junior. Which is just, oh, fabulously pretty. That's next to a couple more rarities. Black 155 a Veloce Sprint and a 159 Sport Wagon, which is becoming a rare car despite being so new. 75 with all the bits. Wow, the wide body kit is awesome. Another 4C. 159. Prettiest car of the mainstream of the last 20 years, probably. Just down there, my, my, my colleague will show you. A Sud. I'm not even sure what this is, but it's fabulous. Oh my goodness, a Mark II. 33 or a Series 233. This is my first Alpha was one of these in black. Loved it. So unreliable. I had a 1.7 Cloverleaf as well. This is literally exactly my old car. Except this one appears to work. Oh, lovely. Two and a half V6. Spider, 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 spider. Well. This is the best colour of any car you can buy at the moment. All the GTVs have crept along here, met by a yellow interloper, that looks good in yellow, doesn't it? Nouveau Le Bleu, fantastic. I'm assuming it's just curiosity, not necessity. Let's hope. This really is an epic sight. All up the old start stop straight, mostly Ferraris, I think, on this area. They've categorised the cars into different things, so let's take a stroll through here and have a look. So many people in so many cars. 
So many comments on that Lamborghini, which is almost a Countach. Countach. This though is something I've never seen before. This is a Eureka 3000 in just an amazing colour. What year is that? 1977. And that's all we come here for. Here we've got four generations of, well, Lamborghini insanity. That sounded cool, didn't it? Second least comfortable, but I think my favourite would be the Diablo. Considering the value of a lot of these cars, it's just amazing they're just parked up here. But everyone's just wander past and enjoy. So fantastic everyone's brought these things along. Because a lot of these are like six figure cars parked up here. You see, it's walking past what looks like a seven figure car. Okay, now this does deserve comment. This is literally a Ferrari F40. One of the most impressive real supercars, hypercars even. Look at that engine in the back, we've got all the heat shielding through there. Solid educated guests, though, don't what a machine. Oh, and what's this? This is the uh, F12, proper four-seater Ferrari. Much nicer than the big SUV nonsense thing I do now. Oh, there's a lot of everyday supercars down here. The Fiat 500 are oh, baths, which I'm sure you don't call them that. But these things sound so cool. I love that there's plenty of personalization going on with these things as well, which is what you want in a car. And now we get my old time favourite Ferrari, yes, the Dino. Such a pretty little thing. In all the colours. So I've got a shaky cam just here walking over. But the Avocado Dino, that is wow. When have you ever seen Avocado Dino before? And clearly someone else likes it because it's one on some kind of ticket thing. I'm sure I've told the story before a few years ago. I was offered a part share on one of these, £10,000. I'm gutted I didn't take that. Well, it looks like we found the Maseratis. Ferrari, Lamborghini, Maserati up this hill. My car is as far as the eye can see at the end of the cars over there in the Alphas. Past the AA vans, which seems a very negative way of looking at things. Now this is a car I'd love to own and I want to be so impressed by. The Quattro Porte is the most beautiful big saloon you're ever going to come across. Unfortunately, <clears throat> there's a certain amount of not quite rightness. And I've driven a few of them and I love them, but the gearbox is just, oh no. How did now this is exciting, an MC20 with the Lambo doors. Well, not Lambo doors, they're Maserati doors, obviously. Pretty supercar. Again, walking around here, spotting things I don't think I've ever seen before. A Maserati, apparently in Maserati Indy. Didn't know that was a thing until a few moments ago. When I've got a dog called Indy, that's Indiana Bones. That, I guess, is referencing something else. Lovely interior, of course. Wood rim steering wheel, beige leather interior. Lots of interesting cars, you can tell the interesting cars because there's a gathering of people around them every single time. Oh, I'm not sure what area we're into up here on the banking. Bit of everything, really. The spiders, the spiders are lovely. Basically an MX-5 with a better badge. 
This, of course, is the handbrake test area. <laughs> As a number plate. Of course, this is the most impressive part of Brooklyn's. This is the old banking part of the original uh, racetrack, the first racetrack purpose built for cars in the world. And just think, 100 years ago, stuff was thundering around up there at 100 miles an hour. And uh, the original bridge is an original feature, believe it or not. It's actually quite hard to stand up on this, so imagine driving it. It's a weird experience driving on bank like this. You have to turn the opposite way of the corner because gravity is pushing you the other way. I've done it once or twice. It's quite weird, actually. There's a really similar track to this over in Barcelona, built virtually on exactly the same model. But this place is apparently very, very haunted because a lot of drivers did get it wrong and went over the edge. Stepping up under the bridge, we've got more Fiat's, more modern Fiat's, I should say. The 500, ooh. The Arbath Punto Supersport, that's a rarity. That's rather fun. And amongst the Puntos, we've got sort of Mark I lowered on uh, our bath alloys. That looks really, really good. And of course, we've got a slightly more modern one as well. In fact, quite a few of these. Not sure which club this is, but I like. Well, a lot of cars are heading off to do the hill of the track and things at the moment. A lot of movement, a lot of amazing sounding revving engines. Oh, another Mark I Punto! Oh, lovely. That. Oh, my goodness. This is basically the staging area from heaven. A couple of Stratoses. Oh, wow. Right, over here under the Concorde is where a lot of the Fiat's have wound up. But behind us we've got a lot of cool stuff. We've got a Punto Sporting, which is a car I'd absolutely love. 
coupes. Coupes are the best. There's a review of one of these things on the channel from not that long ago. Absolutely loved it, gotta say. Around the side is actually more of the same. More, more coupes, some turbo, some not. Another Punto, I think this is a sporting, love the uh, additional aftermarket bumper on that. It's a Cento Sporting, which is cool. And of course, some of the more 70s, 80s cars. This is more 1970s really, isn't it? Stratos, probably a Hawk. And the X19s, so cool. Lots of fun stuff behind the Concorde as well. Obviously more Fiat related. The Pandas, the Pandas are always so cool. Got the Panda 4x4s, which are a bit lifted. Got a Van Panda 4x4. Over here, we've got the modern Panda 100 HP, which I'm desperate to add to my collection. But check out this little camper. This is like the cutest thing in the world. Love it. I honestly don't know what it is. But look at that, that's just a proper little camping, you know, mansion from that tiny, tiny van. Well, 908, that is fabulous. Check this out, got a double bed up there. Got a full 70s, well, brown and brown and brown check interior. Got a full kitchen in there and mains power. That's brilliant. <laughs> it's so cool. Well, I've just found out a little bit of information about this thing. It's not a 4x4, like I thought. It's actually only front wheel drive, but on jacked up suspension. And the rear suspension uses a single Mercedes W123 front spring cut in half and shared between the two sides. Um, it's not originally a van, but it is using van parts from Italy, including a bulkhead where the van was an option. Not over here though. Time to see the cars rolling off to do the track. I'm not sure I'm gonna go and see them on the track because it means crossing over to Mercedes World. Thank you. 
taking advantage of the fact it's nice and quiet while everything's on track over here, we're into the, uh, well, I guess you call it the Auto Italia Alfa Owners Club paddock down here. We've got some quite interesting things. We've got the trade stands. I've even found an Alpha 33 die cast. I've never seen a die cast 33 before. We've got the pre-war launchers. Absolutely beautiful things. Stuff you don't see too often. Now that's a setup and a half. Little Fiat at Topolino. And an Alfa Romeo A12 truck. Wow. There was one of these up at the NEC. And I was blown away with that being restored. That was just astonishing. Now this is one as a car carrier. Got the Ferrari, got the Maserati, got the tiny Italian style plate on it, that's so cool. Over here, more vintage stuff. I don't even know what this thing is. Next to a lovely, lovely lunch, yeah? Flamia. Convertible, wow, that's lovely. Full of, yeah, oh my word. Ooh. Oh, what is that? I've no idea what it is. I'm guessing there's a pop up headlamp, so. Auto Italia have done a feature on it, so I can look in the back of it. You see, it's the Zombo Vignale. It's a 1969 125 B Special. Wow. Never seen one before. And isn't it fantastic? Now, I am so glad I walked back this way, because this wasn't here earlier. This is definitely a highlight of the show. It's a 1929 Lancia Di Lambda 4-litre narrow V8. It came from India originally in 1929, ordered by Maharaja. And the second owner was a major general in India. And the third owner is the husband of the current owner, who imported it to London many years ago in fact and it's been restored yeah. so three owners since 1929 and it really is a work of art look at the shape of the headlights and underneath the bonnet this is you know i didn't realize this was a v8 when i first saw it I walked up to it i thought it was just gonna be a straight six in the distance but look at this beautiful little cupboard just here this little shelf unit for your spanners on the road and inside just wonderful Art Nouveau into Art Deco. This thing is honestly a work of art. <laughs> and still driven regularly. Another rarity, a 1962 Fiat Coupe, or Vignale 750 Coupe. And it's for sale as well. time for a Barchetta. Pretty, pretty little boat. Uh, finally we found the Lanciers or Lanchers. Always innovative, always beautiful. <laughs> Check out the door arrangement on this thing. Pillarless rear suicide doors, amazing. And of course decades of rally pedigree. These things are just awesome. Now this is something you really don't see very often. This is, I don't think they even imported them to the UK. And this one's left-hand drive. This is the Delta that basically replaced the Delta. But we never got it over here. Yeah. I remember sitting in the back of it and it had no heating. 
Check out this little beauty, 127 Sport. I know I've seen this car at many shows before, but I still absolutely love it. And I should mention, this car has got the flyers on the front of it for the Fiat and Friends big 125th anniversary of the Fiat, well, Fiat itself, up at the British Motor Museum on August 3rd. Check out the website, which is fiatandfriends.co.uk. Another car, I'm sure I've just had my car photo taken next to. Up at photo is the convertible Punto, and another, another Panda 100. And these will never not be absolutely adorable. If you don't want to drive it, just have one and have it in the living room. Watch TV from it. And this is one of those, oh wow, I'm glad I took this route back again moments. This is a 131 Sporting, a 2000 TC. Mega, 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 mega rare car. The closest I've seen to this in real life before is a 131 Mia Fiori. They are really uncommon and absolutely fabulous. It's like the Italian Escort Mexico, basically, but with so much more style and technological know-how involved. The Escort is fun and brutal, but this is a very, very complex, technically amazing car. <laughs> Anyone need some 156 telly dials? Only 150 quid on winter tyres too. Now you might be wondering, what on earth is a Mini doing at an Italian car show? Well, guess what? It's an Italian Mini. It's an Innocenti. Innocenti built British laden products under licence in Italy. They've got their own different grille, the different badges. They're actually much better specs than the UK cars. They've got quarter lights and wind up windows different gauge cluster, better seats, lots of little differences, but this is an initiative.